What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Samsung Galaxy A07, tips and tricks, and hidden features. So stay tuned if you'll learn how to get the most out of your device. So this is the Samsung Galaxy A07. Now this phone, despite being one of the cheapest and most affordable devices from Samsung, is actually full of a lot of different features, and in many ways, this phone feels a lot more expensive than it actually is. Now the first thing I want to show you is a quick and easy way to get to the camera app here on the phone, and all you have to do is just double press on the power button, and then from that, you can see it takes us right over to the camera. So it doesn't matter where you are throughout the operating system, just double press on that button, and then the camera immediately pulls up. Also as a bonus feature, if you're looking to increase the megapixel count of your images from 12 to 50 megapixels, you actually have to go up here and tap on 12M, and then from there you'll switch things over to 50M, and then now your images are actually 50 megapixels. Because by default, despite having a 50 megapixel camera, the images are actually 12 megapixels. But that feature of double pressing on the power button is actually known as side key, so you can actually further customize that. So we're gonna go over here to the settings, go to search, type in side, and then you'll see right there side button. I'm sorry, it's now called side button. It used to be called side key. And then from there, you can see it is set up to double press to access the camera. So if you tap on that, you can then go here and you can pick other functionalities. So you can choose the voice recorder or flashlight. You can also go here to apps. And then from there, you can pick any app on the device. So maybe you wanna double press in the power button and activate Instagram instead. So by making that switch, you can see, I'll just double press and then now it pulls up Instagram. So that's definitely a very convenient way to access different apps on your device if you don't want to use that to access the camera. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to hide apps on your Samsung Galaxy A07. So if there's a certain app on this device that you want to keep installed on the phone, but you want to hide it, then all you have to do is just hold down on the home screen here, go to settings, and then go down to where it says hide apps on home and app screens. So once you go there, you can choose from any app in the device and then you can hide it. So maybe you wanna hide OneDrive because you don't use that, it's now hidden, go to done, and then now you won't find OneDrive anywhere here on the device. I believe originally it was located in the Microsoft folder because that is one of their apps. So now that app is now hidden, so you don't have to worry about it. And then to bring that back, go to the same spot where you went to hide it, and then you'll see it is indeed there in your hidden apps. Remove it from there, go to done, and then now you'll see it is back here in your app drawer. Now if you go back to that same area in the settings and then you go back over to here, there are a few other things you might wanna consider. So for example, you can actually change the grid size. So if you wanna add an extra row of apps, you can go to five by six and you can technically put another app or another row of apps right there or another column for that matter. So that is a way to fit more apps on your home screen. Of course, all the app icons will then be a bit smaller to allow for that, but that could be pretty nice. Also, if you are setting this phone up for someone else or even for yourself and you want to lock the home screen layout, because I know for some people they might be moving their apps around by accident, depends on how good they are with tech, but you can lock the layout and then unlock it anytime you want to modify things. And then this one's pretty cool. You can rotate to landscape mode. So with that enabled, if you flip things around, now you can use the phone completely in landscape. So maybe you have your phone set up like this for navigation and you want to also make it easy to go to your various apps. I know a lot of people buy these cheaper Android phones to use for Uber if they're a driver. So if you have your phone like this all the time, then you can also use it in this form factor. Now the next thing I wanna show you is how to take a screenshot with the Samsung Galaxy A07. So to take a screenshot, all you have to do is simply hold the volume down and power button for about a second. And then from there, it'll take the screenshot and then from there, you can edit it or share it. Now there's another thing I wanna show you as well. If you go to the settings on the device, and then you go down to where it says advanced features, you can go here under screenshots, and there are some different things you can customize. So you can, for example, have it delete the screenshots if you share it. You can also choose for that little side toolbar to not appear when you take a screenshot. You can also have your screenshots not have the navigation bar or status bar. So this bar up here and that one down there when you take a screenshot. And you can even change the format as well to a PNG instead of a JPEG. But that's how to take a screenshot with the Samsung Galaxy A07. Now with the Samsung Galaxy A07, this is how the lock screen looks on the phone. So we have the time and date. Now you can further customize this. So to customize it, simply hold down. Then from there, 
you can put in your code. And then from there, you'll have, and you'll see it in a second here, some different options. So if you tap on the time, you can actually choose between different fonts. You can also pick different colors for that font. You can even pick different gradients. You can go here for a full color palette. Then for certain fonts, you can make it thicker or you can make it thinner. You can also go here to style so you can change the way that this looks. So if you want it to have this format instead, you can do that. If you want an analog clock, you have that ability as well. Your calendar, you can pick different time zones or have multiple time zones there. So there's a lot of different ways you can further customize that. You can also add weather information for any of these different functionalities here or different modes. And you can also put the date above the clock if you want to instead. So that's a nice hidden feature there to change the look of your lock screen. And there's even more ways to customize this. So you can tap on add widgets and you can pick from different widgets and you can add those as well on your lock screen. So that could be helpful potentially. And then for these buttons down here, such as the phone and the camera, and you can completely swap that out. So if I tap on the phone icon, you can pick all kinds of different actions here. You can also pick different apps. So really any app that's installed on your device. And you can do the same thing here for the camera instead. So maybe you're not using those quick toggles. You can really pick anything to be a quick toggle. You can also go to suggestions. And then for suggest, it will pick basically different lock screen styles. So it's taking my wallpaper, but then adding a different look. So you can see the clock looks different. It's adding different shapes. You can also do this manually under frame. So you can pick all these different frames and you can also pick the outside color as well. And you can even pick a specific color too. So there's just so many different ways to make your lock screen a lot more fun. And then under here too, there's different effects. So I actually have the blur effect already enabled here, but you can have original. You can also pick different color overlays and then you can also pick dark mode. But then from here, heading back over to the main settings on the device, you can then go down to advanced features once again. And there are several other things I want to show you here. So I already showed you side button, but if you go to multi window, you can choose swipe for split screen. So if you're in an app and you swipe up with two fingers, it puts the phone into split screen. Then from there, you can pick a recent app as the other half or go here for all your apps. And then from there, pick another app. And then now you can see it's a 50 50 split. Now I can grab on here and further adjust that. If I want one of the apps to take over more than the other, I can also tap here and star it. So if I want to add that pair to the home screen, I can do that. And then now anytime I go here, it'll pull up that app pair. And then also tapping here, we'll swap those around. Now we'll try swipe for pop-up view. So with that enabled, we'll go to the calculator for this demonstration. If I swipe over from that corner, it'll now put this app in pop-up view. So basically you can see it's a floating application and I can go throughout the operating system here and it just floats. Now I can also resize this to make it smaller or make it larger. I can tap up here. I can expand that further. I can shrink it down into this small icon, which I can also move wherever I want. And if I tap there again, it'll open it further back up. Now I can also easily go to split screen from there. And then once again, pick another app to have right here. So maybe the settings. So there's definitely a lot of different options when it comes to that. Now back over in this advanced features menu, there is motions and gestures. So a lot of these are not enabled by default, but I wish they were. So I'm going to select all of these. Now this is kind of strange for some reason with lift to wake enabled here, I cannot get it to work. <laughs> I'm not sure why it's supposed to, but the other ones do work. So double tapping, we'll turn on the screen. And then from the wallpaper, double tapping there, we'll turn off the screen. And then we also have alert when phones picked up. So your phone will vibrate when you pick it up after missing a call and then turn over to mute. So when you turn the phone down, it will then mute that call. And then we also have one handed mode. Now this one's pretty nice. So with this device, we're getting a very large 6.7 inch display. And with the display being that big, it's pretty difficult, if not impossible to reach all portions of it with just one hand. But if you enable that, and then now you swipe down on the home button there and now it shrinks things down and you can access the whole phone. So it's like we're getting a little mini smartphone here, which is pretty awesome. Now you can tap here to switch it over to the other side. You can also hold down in the corner to further adjust the sizing. You can hold down up here to change the placement. And if you tap on the outside of this, it'll bring things back to normal. Now you can also switch this to go to double tapping the home button and it'll do the same exact thing. Now from the main settings here, if we go over to display, one of the options here is dark mode. So dark mode is pretty self-explanatory. If you're in a movie theater, for example, this is a great feature to have. Now you can go to dark mode settings. You can set a schedule for this as well. So you can have it where when the sun sets, it'll put it in dark mode. 
and then when the sun rises, it'll go out of it. Or you can also pick a custom schedule. We can also go down here to motion smoothness, and the phone is set to 90 hertz refresh rate at all times. And I definitely do recommend that because it makes the phone feel a lot faster. But if you switch it to 60 hertz, it will run a little bit slower, but you will get better battery life. And then also from this area, you can enable eye comfort shield. This is great at night because it's going to cut out a lot of blue light. You can even further adjust the temperature, which is nice. You can even set a schedule too. And then also over here, you can change the fonts for the whole system. You can make your fonts bolder if you want. Just a lot of fonts available. You can also download fonts as well. So you can further customize that. And then also over here, we have navigation bar. So if you want to switch the placement of the buttons, so the back button is now on the left side, you can also go over to gesture-based navigation. So with that, if you swipe up, it'll take you home. Swiping partially up will take you to recent apps. And then swiping over from the side will take you back. And then if you are using a screen protector with this device, you might want to enable touch sensitivity. And then with that, it should perform a little bit better. We do have also the battery settings area. Now you might want to enable power saving mode if you know that you're not going to be near an outlet anytime soon and you're worried about the phone running out of battery. Now what's cool is that if you go here, you can pick which different things you want to have disabled when you have power saving mode enabled. So maybe you actually don't want the phone to have a slower refresh rate when it's in that mode. You can make that adjustment and you can really completely customize this feature. You'll also see over here an option called battery protection that is not enabled by default, but if I turn that on, You'll see here there's different options. So there's basic, adaptive, and maximum. So for basic, when your battery is charged to 100%, charging will stop until the battery level drops down to 95%, and then it'll charge again. So then with that, your phone won't always be at 100%, and then in theory, that should help your battery stay a little bit healthier over a long period of time. There's also adaptive, so the phone will stop at 80% when you're asleep, then it will switch to basic when it thinks you're gonna wake up, so it does this based on your daily schedule, at least what routines you personally do. And then finally, there is maximum and your phone's battery will stop charging when it reaches 80%. Now, if you're not aware, just like any smartphone out there, the battery does degrade, so it won't work as well as time goes on. So a feature like battery protection will just make your phone feel fresh for a bit longer. But honestly, I wouldn't worry about this too much. But this concludes my video on tips, tricks, and hidden features for the Samsung Galaxy A07. I hope you enjoyed this video and most importantly learned something new, but if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. This is Kevin here, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.